Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Division video. It's that time of the week again. It is the vendor reset time. And in today's video, I'm going to kind of take on the feedback from last week's episode. I asked you guys to try and tell me which format you preferred, the kind of slightly more condensed, only showing you the good stuff, or the whole like, I will show you everything format. And based on feedback, you guys would much rather a kind of targeted video. And let's be honest, after a week like last week, which was pretty rubbish, then nobody wants to sit through like a 15 minute long video of rubbish items. So I'm going to keep it a lot more focused this week. I will be slightly generous with what I deem a good item so you guys get a broader look at what's available. But we are going to go and focus on that. So if you do enjoy this, like be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. Also, we're going to mix these up this week and start randomly down here in the special equipment vendor. Partly because he has a good item. So let's kick things off with a good start. Skipping past the usual Historian, Liberator and Valkyria. You have a first wave X45 with Expert and Destructive. A first wave Vector 45 ACP with Fierce, Swift and Brutal. Brutal is in the free slot. Fierce is of course quite nice. Swift is the one you would probably roll out. Now this is interesting because of course it would go quite nicely in an Alpha Bridge. The first wave Vector 45 ACP is of course not the best SMG right now. That of course goes to the PP-19 and the MP-5. MP-5 for PvP, PP-19 for PvE. But as mentioned you could use it in an Alpha Bridge. I'm not a massive fan of using 256 weapons as a secondary in Alpha Bridge, but given the way the game works now and the fact that you can't just change world tier to drop down vendor gear score, then it's a lot harder to get hold of a low gear score item. So with that being said, sometimes you need to grab what you can. So this isn't too bad. But what I really want to turn my attention to is the LVOAC. This is a very nice weapon. Definitely pick this up. Vicious, deadly and destructive. Destructive in the free slot, deadly and vicious there. All very nice talents. You wouldn't even need to roll out anything on this. This is just very nice as it comes. And the LVOAC, there was like a really nice one quite a while back in patch 1.4. I used to run it for a very long time. In fact, a lot of people used to run it for a very long time. And since then, there hasn't really been a kind of good replacement until now. This is very nice. Buy it as it is. And the LVOAC, as a reminder, is one of the highest damage assault rifles. LVOAC being better for PvP. The G36 being better for PvE. So if you want this, definitely grab it. I know one of the popular setups right now, yes, it's not necessarily the most interesting setup, but a lot of people are running a Alpha Bridge setup with a primary assault rifle and then FAMAS in the secondary slot. So if you do want to run that because it's just, you know, it's good for damage, it's good for survivability, it's good for soloing, then the LVOSC will go great in slot one. So definitely pick this up. I need to go and get myself some Phoenix credits because I am broke right now. So I'll be picking this one up. But yeah, that is probably going to be already the highlight of this week. So LVOSC... In the special equipment vendor, in the base operations, down in the terminal, definitely grab this. After that, you have a Super 90, commanding, unforgiving, and dominant. Classic M44 with sustained, talented, and competent. And a military L86 LSW, competent, unforgiving, and accurate. Then scrolling down past the gear, I'm not going to stop on any of this, especially not the high-end pieces. They're not actually that exciting this time around. There's no, like, specialized backpack, reckless chest piece, savage gloves, or anything like that. So... This one, I do personally prefer my mods with armor, but you do have a firearms mod with health. So if you don't have, say, armor, then this would be like a good thing to go to as a secondary. Where possible, try and get armor on your mods. But if you don't have them, as mentioned, this is like an option. And of course, this one here is quite nice as a performance mod. If you guys are running anything solo, then first aid self heal is a nice thing to kind of stack into your mod slot. So a couple of nice mods there, worth considering. Not necessarily the best, but they're not too bad. And as for your kind of usual blueprint vendor and the underground, of course, they kind of don't rotate too much. The blueprint vendor, just hit him up and check out what he has. Underground is just for caches. So then turning our attention to the advanced weaponry vendor. He has the usual Pakan, Cassidy and Centurion. He has a not very exciting PX4 Storm Type F with Intense on it. A Tactical Vector 45 ACP, also not that exciting, especially when the other option down below is much better. A Lightweight M4 with Skilled, Predatory and Capable. And while I do like skilled, it's not in the free slot, so I probably overlook that one. An SASG-12 with trained, adept, and sustained. Surplus SVD, which as a reminder is the kind of best model for PvP. This one is not good, it's not kind of a great role, you've got commanding, predatory, and disciplined. But just keep that in mind going forward, and a military MK-46, also not that exciting. As for the Dark Zone gear vendor, only thing that's worth really talking about here is the Police M4. It's not that great, it's a bit of a stretch, but it does have Brutal in the free slot. It has Competent, which, while it's not necessarily one of my go-to talents, it's also not bad, especially if you were to, again, run it in the kind of predictable Alpha Bridge assault rifle setup right now. So you can roll out Swift and make it a decent weapon. So that's something worth considering. Everything else here you can overlook. And as for these guys here, also nothing exciting. So now let's turn our attention to the Dark Zone. So starting off in DZ02, again, unfortunately, not an exciting set of uh, gear pieces. You have a rejuvenated mask, a robust chest piece, a technical backpack, pair of prosperous knee pads, 
a recovered holster and a pair of decisive gloves. So nothing again like the kind of usual candidates. I am personally on the lookout for a specialized backpack. I have kind of all the other ones usually in my stash, but that is one thing that I'm looking for. So hopefully we'll see one at some point this week. Then over to DZ03, this is where you go to get your weapons. The first four options are not that exciting, so I'm not even going to kind of bother wasting your time. One's worth talking about are the Police MK17 and the Military M60. So the Police MK17, it's not perfect, definitely not by a long shot, but it does have cool headed on it, which is something that I do quite like to have on my marksman rifles. The MK17, as a reminder, is one of the highest damage marksman rifles for PvE. That's kind of part of the Scar H category, so Scar H, MK17, and the SOCOM MK20, I believe it is. I always forget the numbers for that one. Cool headed also, I do prefer it to be in the free slot because it can be a bit of a pain to unlock, especially if most people are kind of spec more towards firearms and stamina. But that being said, you have competent on it, you have cool headed on it, you can roll something else into the free slot and potentially make something out of it. Of course, on something like this, which is one of the higher damage you know, options, you would typically stack on more damage and talents. But when I do see something like this, especially with cool headed, because you don't see it that much these days, then it is something I kind of do like to call out. So don't go thinking this is the best but it's something that at a stretch could be considered. And the military M60 as well also has self-preserved, sustained and deadly. So in this situation, you'd roll out sustained and then have a pretty cool option. I know LMGs aren't used quite as much at the moment, but the M60 is still a strong LMG. So having deadly, having self-preserved and then something you can put in there could be quite a nice option. DZ04, just drop in here very quickly, but I always like to try and highlight these just in case you guys are looking for these mods. But you have a prototype electronics mod with plus skill power, and you also have a performance mod with ballistic shield health. So if you are running a shield build, then you might want to consider that. As for DZ05, your weapon mod vendor, you have a high velocity magazine, crit hit chance, crit hit damage and reload speed, a compensator with stability, crit hit damage and headshot damage, hand stop with reload speed, stability and optimal range, and a holographic sight with optimal range, accuracy and stability. And as for DZ06, things worth calling out are the Alpha Bridge chest piece that has plus 1200 armor on it and a stamina roll. It also has protection from elite, so you have a lot of freedom with this piece to kind of either roll out one of the primary attributes if you want something else, or to kind of roll out something like protection from elites for an alternative. So pretty nice chest piece, especially for those of you guys that might be going towards an Alpha Bridge build. You also have an Alpha Bridge rucksack with crit hit damage and disrupt resistance and a Banshee Shadow holster with armor on it. So they're the kind of main ones worth talking about. And with all the main vendors done, now we're going to turn our attention to the kind of wider map. I'm only going to visit all the kind of ones that are relevant, so we're now going to go and hit up the safe houses. First up, Autumn's Hope safe house. This guy has a couple of items here. He has a reckless chest piece, so if you are looking for something to kind of fill one of your gaps in your build, then this is something you can consider. It also has damage to elites on and protection from elites, so it is lacking armor, so you would have to roll out something, but it is there if you guys want it. And also a performance mod with ballistic shield damage resilience. After that, the next notable one is the Cavern. This guy is selling a specialized backpack, which again, very useful if you're gonna be running that Alpha Bridge build, and also a performance mod with mobile cover damage resilience. Not that exciting, but hey, we're here. Might as well cover it anyway. I'm gonna grab that backpack right now. Sorry, also completely forgot to mention that the specialized backpack also comes with armor already rolled on it, which makes it pretty nice because of course you're then free to you know mess around with the other attributes. Then over on the east side of the map, the last cool safe house. This guy has an interesting tactical AUG A3P. Again, not necessarily the strongest SMG out there, but it does have commanding, brutal, and deadly on it. Deadly in the free slot. Commanding is, of course, the one that you would roll out. And then you could actually have a pretty nice weapon. Those two are, of course, very nice talents. So throw something else in there, and you've actually got a pretty nice weapon. Again, not necessarily the best model, but something that could either go well enough for bridge or just, you know, be a backup if you haven't necessarily got a good SMG to kind of fill that slot. So definitely consider that one. That is in the last cool safe house. And while we're here, primary.site, critical hit damage, accuracy, and optimal range. Then after that, moving a little bit further north to the grand house, this vendor has another interesting option. This is a military scar H, which is of course another one of those high damage marksman rifles for PVE. Same category as the police MK17. This one has ferocious, deadly, and toxic. Now ferocious and deadly, very nice talents. Toxic is a bad talent, but the good thing is, it is in the free slot, so you can roll it out, and whatever goes in there will already be activated. So if you guys are looking for a high damage marksman rifle for PvE, definitely consider picking this up. This one is actually pretty nice, and while we're here, again, large suppressor FD, crit hit damage, critical hit chance, headshot damage, and reduced threat. That's actually not too bad. Then turning our attention to the Dark Zone checkpoint vendors, the first one we're talking about is on the east side of the map, East 40th Street. This vendor has a surplus SVD. This one's a bit of a stretch, but it comes with capable, brutal, and disciplined. In this situation, you can roll it capable and make it, you know, relatively acceptable. Moving down from there to East 34th Street, this vendor has a weapon that's not necessarily the greatest. It's one of the new weapons, so I like to kind of call them out just in case you guys are chasing them. This is the converted USC. It has skilled, it has deadly on it, and it has ambusher, which is the kind of talent tied to that weapon. 
You could roll out Ambusher and have something that is, of course, free, no matter what you get. Skilled is, of course, a little bit hard to unlock. It's an electronic skill, so you'd need to spec slightly more towards it. So if you were considering this and you weren't spec electronics, then you could conversely roll out Skilled. Either way, new weapon there if you guys wanted to check it out. Then over on the west side, West 31st Street, this vendor has a pair of Savage Gloves. So if you guys are looking for these, they also have Health on Kill, create a Chance, and LMG damage, as well as a base Stamina roll. And then finally, right at the very top left, West 53rd Street. Here you can go to grab a Prototype Performance Mod with 6% First Aid Self Heal. So again, if you guys are running a solo build and you want to make your self heals a lot more useful, then definitely consider stacking this. And of course, if you're then running things like Booster Shot, you can make that a lot more useful instead of having to kind of default to Overheal. So that is your option there. But besides that, that is pretty much it. So that was a slightly more condensed week. Of course, there were still a few items that weren't perfect, but hopefully it's given you guys a broader look at what's available while still focusing on the best things. Highlights are definitely the LVOC, 100% grab that, and a few of the other items at a stretch could be considered, but if you're going to take anything from this week, definitely grab that LVOAC. Anyway, thanks for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.